Okay, this is Rob. This is for my digital fabrications class. Yesterday we went into the Fab Lab and looked at the milling machine. I also showed you how you might set up the, uh, the actual tile model using the dimensions that we've all kind of agreed on. So, uh, so I'm just going to show you again here just so you can see the last little bit that I showed you yesterday, which is the boundary fill uh, where you're able to see the, um, the volume of silicone that you would need and also the volume of uh, casting material that you would need after that. So I'm just going to start by making the actual tile and this is what I did in class. I've got this 50 by 50 um, surface and it's going to be still 6.5 millimeters thick and right away I'll rename this body and call it uh, tile relief. This is the portion that I can carve into. I can carve all the way to the bottom if I want and then uh, I will also extrude it from here down six and, uh, six and a half millimeters, and instead of joining, I'll use new body so that I can actually call this something else. And I'll call this tile base. Then uh, what I need is my um, mold walls, so I can create a sketch on the bottom surface of the uh, model so far, and um, I'll use offset and offset this by seven millimeters. That's the size of my trough. I'll do an offset again and go out another eight. So that's the thickness of my silicone mold. I'll hit close and now my uh, sketch is done. I can use the press pull command and actually press pull this up. I could uh, use the two feature and have it go up to the top of my tile, that's 13 millimeters, but actually we want to go further than that um, because now we're not building our own tile walls. So I really want this to be another 8 millimeters on top of that, that would give me t minus 21 millimeters. Okay, and uh, again, everybody doesn't have to make a square one, but this is the, the square, uh, we're looking for 50 square, uh, 50? 25 square centimeters for the, uh, the surface, but it could be round, could be curved, could be uh, rectangular. Okay, so now I have everything except a base to my uh, walls. I'm going to call this the mold walls. And then I'll do one more thing, which is to make a box on the bottom surface here. And I'll make that come down whatever's left. So if that went up, if these walls went up 21 and my wax is actually 20, five thick, then this can only go down four millimeters. So if I wanted to double check this, the overall height, uh, if I click inspect and then click on this, it should be 25 millimeters, and it is. Okay, so um, at this point, oh, actually I'm gonna go back one because I didn't want to uh, join that. I wanted to make that a separate thing. You don't have to, but uh, I'm gonna go back and do that one more time. So I'll make my box here and I will come down my four millimeters. Ah, too quick with the keyboard. One more time, create the box on this surface. Make it uh, 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters and then it's going to be four millimeters deep and instead of joining it, I want a new body. So, just so I can keep everything separate, here is my mold base. Okay, I'm done. So, I could at this point go back and hide everything else and work on the tile, get it exactly how I want, put everything back in, and I should uh, be able to see the whole mold completed just as it's going to get carved on the milling machine. The, the interesting part now is that we can actually fill this mold, and um, before I do that, what I'll do is, um, well, let me just do something to this so that we can get a sense of uh, what a mold might look like with an actual carved thing. So. I think I did this before, I'll just use a spline and um, make some kind of curvy surface here and say that's okay. Um, again, this is, this is an interesting thing. Um, this, I would like this, this point to move upward, but what's actually happened is if we edit the sketch, we can see that there's a, a coincident constraint here. So I can click on it, hit delete, and now I should be able to move this off that edge. So that's a, a detail. All of those constraints are listed here. 
uh, if you see one of those symbols that may be why you can't move it in a certain way okay and the last thing I'll do is just uh, press pull this all the way over so now I've got a tile with something some kind of surface on it if I look back at everything uh, now it looks more like maybe what you'd have okay so the uh, the last thing is to do the boundary fill and the way that I need to do that is to create a construction plane to just cap off my mold and uh, that's it I can just hit OK so now I've got a cap for it another thing I want to do because when I create the boundary fill it's going to ask me for all of the boundaries one is the top but then I've got all these separate bodies inside that are um, defining the area that we can pour into so one thing I'm going to do is instead of combining these all into one mold is that I will uh, select them all and then create a selection set and uh, now this selection set is something that I can select and it'll actually select all of those bodies at once so let's try this now with nothing selected I'll go to uh, boundary fill and I will click all of the tools which are basically all of the boundaries that's one and then this selection set is the other so uh, it actually says I've got five things selected because the selection set is four of four bodies I'll choose the cell which is actually the part that I'm going to uh, fill and I can click on that it looks right and hit OK so it's made a new body and that new body is actually uh, my silicone mold so if I hide all of these other things I should be able to see a silicone mold with the positive version of uh, of my um, object so this now is where I would cast some material in and I'd get my 50, cent, 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter tile with a at least uh, 13 millimeters of solid base sorry six and a half millimeters of solid base and then some other six and a half millimeters where the carving is happening if that's not really visible yet then um, what we could do is uh, let's actually pull this out this is what I did in class so I can select the mold and then uh, move and actually just flip it over 180 degrees and then move it over so somehow I'm on the bottom here <laughs> so there's my uh, original thing that I carved on the mill there's my silicone mold uh, if I wanted to add some properties to start making this look more sensible um, I can go to appearance and probably under other rubber silicone I could make this into uh, white silicone <clears throat> it's actually not white silicone so maybe I'll duplicate this and edit it it's actually kind of a baby blue color and uh, I'll hit done and I could use that color instead okay just to start differentiating these things uh, I also have wax here and there's some red wax I could make this uh, oh, not the walls only what I want is to uh, maybe select the selection set and then um, then open the preferences let's see how I can do this choose appearance I will select the selection set and then drag wax over to it this is mostly unnecessary but it kind of makes the illustration clearer well might have to actually drag it over to each one so it's not the worst thing okay and actually it's not going to be red wax it's blue machinable wax but at least we can start to tell the difference between these things okay and then uh, finally what I'll do is hide that entire um, well, I wish I could hide those all at once but uh, hide that so we only have the silicone mold and then uh, what I'll do is do the same process I'll do a construction plane on top of the silicone mold hit enter uh, and there it is and I could do a boundary fill again so I'll do create boundary fill here's my silicone mold that's one tool this uh, construction plane is the other tool and then I need to select the cell which is that interior space and hit OK 
So this new body that it just created is now my final casting. If I want, I can uh, move that, just uh, basically flip it over 180 degrees and uh, move it over a bit. So that's it. This is my now my finished uh, wax casting. So that's what my tile would look like. So I, th I think that's it. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. Um, you know, I, I will go a step further and say the whole reason we're doing this is so that we can right click on something like the silicone mold, hit properties, and here we'll see the actual volume of it. We're not so interested in the mass because um, that's for steel. We, we changed the silicone appearance, but we didn't actually change the material. There aren't, I don't think there is a silicone material. It doesn't know enough about it to be able to determine the density. But we do know the density of the material that we have. It's on the, on the uh, data sheet that came with the box and the, the actual silicone. I'm kind of interested to know if I can create my own material, and maybe I'll try that out, and we could actually have the, uh, the real numbers here, how much it weighs and how, what the density is. So the thing I'm interested in, though, is the volume. And so this is actually 6.259 uh, times 10 to the fourth. That's what this means. So if we wanted to try that out, um, 6.249 times 10 to the fourth. That's 62,490. Of course, that just means moving the decimal place four, four places. That's why it comes out to this. So 62,490, uh, if we look back here, it's showing us that that's cubic millimeters. So uh, if I plug that number in and say that's cubic millimeters, um, what is it in cubic centimeters? So there's a number, 62.49 cubic centimeters. Uh, at that point, you know, we could look at the, uh, the actual data sheet for the silicone that we have and find out how much uh, weight 62.49 cu uh, cubic centimeters is. And let's say it came out to uh, 200 grams. I have no idea. I'm making these numbers up. But let's say it came out to 200 grams. Well, that tells me how much silicone I need to mix up for this mold. So uh, we can go through that whole process together on the day that we cast our silicone molds, and we can look at the paperwork for the silicone that we have. Um, another thing that's kind of maybe an easier example is if we look at the final casting and do the same thing, choose properties, we have uh, this number, two point Basically, we're going to end up with 23420, right? 23,420 cubic millimeters. Uh, 23,420 23, cubic millimeters to cubic centimeters, let's say. So it's 23.42 cubic centimeters. An interesting thing is if you just look at uh, if you Google what's the volume of a crayon, someone has uh, figured this out. In cubic centimeters, what's the volume of a crayon? So they've kind of measured all the parts and then they've come up with a volume and in cubic centimeters it is 4.5. So we've just been told that we need 23.42 cubic centimeters of this casting material and we know that crayons are four and a half cubic centimeters of wax each. So this could tell us how many crayons we need to melt to fill one of these tiles. That's directly useful without going through this extra step of figuring out how much uh, that weighs, right? Because we're actually, we can tell uh, how many actual crayons we need. So we're definitely gonna use that to try and figure it out. But uh, right away, four and a half cubic centimeters uh, and here we're looking at 23.42. We can do the math really quickly and find out how many crayons we need. So let me know if you have any questions about this whole process in Fusion 360 or uh, if you want to jump ahead and, and try and figure out how much silicone or wax you would need for your um, tile. Okay, thanks.